deeply about life. Tonight at 7 on Arizona PBS. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. Tickets are now available for the annual Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon. Held Thursday, October 19 at the Sheraton Grand Phoenix. Join media industry and community leaders in honoring award-winning co-anchors and co-managing editors of the PBS NewsHour, Judy Woodruff, and the late Gwen Eiffel. To learn more or to purchase tickets, call 602-496-0482 or visit cronkite.asu.edu slash luncheon. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. Your favorite PBS shows, ready to watch when you are, anytime, any place. Find more ways to explore than ever before. Coming soon to Arizona PBS. I had the opportunity to call my mother. And I said, um, you'll probably never see me again because everybody in my unit's dying. I probably won't be coming back. And my mother said, no, you're coming back. She said, I talk to God every day, and you're special. And I said, my everybody's mother thinks that they're special. You know, I'm putting pieces of special people in bags. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from Deanne Griebel, now with Moores and Cabot Investments, serving investors since 1890, proudly supports quality programming on 8 Arizona PBS, 480-725-9602. I'm David Goldstein, owner of Biltmore Loan and Jewelry. We buy our loan on upscale assets. We have over 30 years of experience in determining values of automobiles, jewelry, art, collectibles, and antiques. For more information and appointments, BiltmoreLoan.com. From the Cronkite Studios in downtown Phoenix, this is Cronkite News. Members of Congress start to propose their own solutions to the six-month DACA deadline imposed by President Donald Trump. How Arizona lawmakers hope to ban covered faces during future protests. Opioid addiction still plagues Arizona. However, a new report has been sent statewide, filled with detailed steps on fighting the addiction. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Madison Connor. And I'm Tyler Finger. Thank you for joining us. 15 states in Washington, D.C. are suing the Trump administration over its plan to end DACA. But some members of Congress are already moving forward on deportation protection for young immigrants. Today, Democrats demanded an early vote on the DREAM Act, House and Senate bills that would prove many, provide many of the same protections that DACA did. We today are calling on Speaker Ryan and Leader McConnell to immediately put the DREAM Act on the floor for a vote in the House and Senate. Yeah. We're ready to pass it. I am confident that if put on the floor, it will garner overwhelming support from both sides of the aisle. Arizona businesses may be hit hard by this week's DACA decision, especially business owners who are DACA recipients themselves. Reporter Nikirika Amaranye talked to people about their dreams for success and the potential impact of changes in immigration policy. This week, President Donald Trump announced his plan to rescind DACA. The decision sparked protests all over the country and concerns about the future of DACA recipients known as DREAMers were raised. Some people think that they're only going to school. Um, they're working in our workforce. They're contributing to our economy. They're paying taxes. According to a report by pro-immigration groups FWD.US and Center for American Progress, about 91% of DACA workers are employed and 5% own their own businesses. It's a uh, fitness apparel line um, that sort of targets 
the Hispanic demographic. Shavaria came to the United States from Mexico when she was seven years old and took the chance to start the apparel line as well as a digital marketing company. So with DACA, I was able to do many things that I wasn't able to do as an undocumented youth. I was able to apply for driver's license for the first time, get health insurance. Reina Montoya also started her own business. She says she has tried to secure citizenship in the past. There's been multiple times that I have tried to adjust my status. There is no legal status. She worries what may happen to the five employees of her immigration advocacy group, Aliento, if DACA is repealed. One of my employees is a U.S. citizen as well, so then what's going to happen to his job if all of us get deported? Stephanie Vasquez is the owner of Fair Trade Cafe, another place where DACA recipients have found work. I don't categorize any of my team as DACA or non-DACA. They're human beings, first and foremost. So um, I'm totally going to get emotional because we're messing with people's lives. C suggests that everyone just be a little more empathetic. That it's time for us to wake up, and it's time for us to look beyond our own backyards, and to act, and to come together, and to support, and above all, to love. In Phoenix, in Kiriko, Marinia, Cronkite News. One local nonprofit is launching a program to help DACA students get money for college. The program is known as the Immigrant Scholarship Hustle. The biggest barrier to college education for DACA beneficiaries and undocumented students is actually paying for tuition. And so we decided, let's give them the skill set and a very specific tool to be able to go to college. Anyone can apply for the program, and the application process closes September 15th. For our full multimedia coverage on this week's DACA decision, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org. It's been a week since a contentious Phoenix City Council meeting packed to capacity with residents concerned over police treatment of protesters at President Trump's rally last month. Today, a group of residents gathered for this, uh, gathered for this week's council meeting to send support for the Phoenix Police Department and to thank them for their service. My hat is off to you, clearly. Phoenix police did their jobs, and I was very, my experience with Phoenix police was, it, it was first rate. I was there in that Trump rally. I saw what happened. An internal police investigation is still underway into the officer's use of tear gas and pepper balls after the rally, but the council halted a plan for an external investigation. Following protests that broke out after President Trump's rally in Phoenix, Arizona lawmakers are looking for ways to make protests and public demonstrations safer. Cronkite News reporter Bridget Dowd is in the broadcast center with details on what could be a new bill. Some of those protesters were wearing masks, which made it difficult for police to identify those suspected of assaulting officers. One Arizona representative says when people are able to hide their faces, they're more likely to commit acts of violence and he hopes to change that. This footage shows just a glimpse of the chaotic scene in downtown Phoenix following President Trump's speech. Republican Representative Jay Lawrence says some of the more violent protesters hid their faces with masks. He plans to introduce a bill that would prohibit the use of masks and hoods at future protests. People say, if I'm unmasked, my boss will know who I am. If you are that ashamed, of that for which you are demonstrating, you shouldn't be doing it. Stay home. While Arizona does not yet have a law like this, other states like Alabama and West Virginia have already adopted similar laws. Representative Lawrence says in addition to making it a felony for someone to wear a hood or a mask at a protest, he hopes enhanced charges will come to those who commit crimes while wearing a mask. And Lawrence isn't the only one who thinks unmasking those people could make public demonstrations safer. Don Steinmetz is a former Phoenix police sergeant. When you see people uh, with masks and stuff like that, when a, as a police officer you think of a bank robber or somebody like that generally, so you know that they're concealing it for some kind of bad deed. However, some people are concerned that this ban would violate their constitutional rights, like Phoenix resident Tanya Mendez, who participated in the protest a few weeks ago. 
however people want to dress or protest, they have the freedom to dress however they want. You know, if people are comfortable with open carry laws in the state of Arizona, why would somebody feel uncomfortable with a mask or being able to remain anonymous? We asked ASU law professor Joseph Rusamano if a law like this would be constitutional. He says if it infringes on the ability to express an idea, it could violate the First Amendment. However, government interest in public safety could outweigh an individual's right to free speech. Lawrence has sent his suggestion to House, House attorneys who are in the process of writing the legislation. He says he'll introduce the bill as his first order of business in January. In the Broadcast Center, Bridget Dowd, Cronkite News. It's tricky to keep kids healthy, especially at back to school time. That's why doctors say proper vaccines are so important. Coming up on Cronkite News, why one vaccination has become a go-to for teens. Plus, a new study is giving new options to people with heart disease. What was once off limits now may actually be beneficial. When a story comes in in the morning, we're out the door as fast as we can go. But it's also great to spend more time in communities and produce projects. From the borderlands to the cities, the reservations, and even the state capitol, we want to get to the heart of the matter. When the lights come on in the studio, we know our hard work is about to pay off. We love what we do here at Cronkite News. We're proud to tell the stories of our state. Now more than ever, it's important to have a trusted news source, and that's Cronkite News. This fall. I'm so excited! What? <laughs> from the inspiring to the amazing. We're in the presence of history. The compelling. He said, welcome home. It was just a powerful moment. To the astounding. <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't cry. <laughs> and from the breathtaking. This is real. A journey to Mars. To the electrifying. We're going to change the world. All this and more. All this fall. ever has. The state health department released a 100-page report today detailing steps to help fight Arizona's opioid addiction crisis. Governor Doug Ducey declared a state of emergency in June. Since then, there have been increased reporting requirements for suspected overdoses. The state reports 280 suspected overdose deaths in just 11 weeks. Today, the Arizona Department of Health Services released five main goals to help address the epidemic. Increase patient and public awareness and prevent opioid use disorder. Improve prescribing and dispensing practices. Reduce illicit acquisition and diversion of opioids. Improve access to treatment, all to help reduce opioid deaths. So the most important goal of our opioid epidemic is reducing opioid deaths in Arizona. So that's been a passion of the governors for the last several years. And when we identified in June that Arizona was at its highest number of opioid caused deaths since we've been monitoring, um, that's why he called the emergency so that we could identify strategies to keep people from dying. Less than a week after Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich sued INSYS for its prescription practices, the Chandler-based pharmaceutical company was back under fire today. Missouri Senator Claire McCaskill released a Senate investigation on INSYS. It claims that employees were pushed to manipulate the process for approving prescriptions of its pain care subsidy, which contains the powerful synthetic opioid fentanyl. Criminal indictments and public reporting show that INSYS has manipulated the insurer approval process, known as prior authorization, to boost the rate for reimbursements for substance. INSYS techniques have included the falsification of medical histories for substance patients and the concealment 
of the company's role in intervening with the insurers and pharmacy benefit man uh, managers. Cronkite News is dedicated to covering the opioid crisis. Our doc documentary, Hooked Rx, From Prescription to Addiction, highlights the problem of painkillers in Arizona. Find resources for getting help online at hookedrx.org. It's back to school time, and many teens in Arizona are keeping up with their shot records, including the HPV vaccine. Cronkite News reporter Sierra Delgado shows us why more Arizona teens are getting shots to prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Human papillomavirus is a virus that can cause certain cancers and diseases to both girls and boys. For Sandra Kainez, getting her kids vaccinated was worth it. I think it's good to kind of take those blinders off. Um, it's, you know, be proactive and come to the realization that, again, children are going to be children, um, teens are going to be teens, and they're going to do what they want to do at times. And if we can just try and help to prevent them from causing any type of harm to themselves, then might as well do it. Schools in Arizona don't require the HPV vaccine, but according to the Arizona Department of Public Health, 68% of girls and 51% of boys have gotten at least one dose of the vaccine in 2015. Maricopa County nurse Linda Watson explains what happens if a teen does miss a dose. The problem is, is that they're not going to be totally protected, but the good news is, is that even if you get a dose and you don't go back for two years, you can get the next dose and it's still effective. And Dr. Shafiq Tomei wants parents to know that simply getting their child vaccinated can save the family from regrets. This is a vaccine that prevents cancer. And so why wouldn't you give that when it's a simple shot versus a lifetime of, of problems with cancer treatment afterward? Kanyez recommends parents educate themselves about the HPV vaccine. The cancers that are going around and how common it is nowadays, um, the STDs, you know, how common those are as well. Anything that we can do to prevent our kids from, you know, co contracting one of those, whether it be now or in the future. Experts say that parents should worry less about the vaccine being a sex-related issue and more of a cancer prevention issue. In Phoenix, Sierra Delgado, Cronkite News. The CDC recommends kids ages 9 to 12 years old receive two doses of the vaccine and teens 15 and older receive three doses. A new study shows that people with heart disease still may be able to enjoy fatty foods. Reporter Mia Atkins tells us how increasing the intake of fats could be good for heart health. Brooke Hack and her daughter Haley have the same problem, alarmingly high cholesterol, a genetic condition that puts them at risk of heart disease. They carefully watch what they eat so they can lower this risk. Her modification is going to be a little less than mine was at her age, but it's still one of those things where you don't want your child to have to have the same struggles. Both women have completely changed their diets to reduce fats, but a new study shows that may have been the wrong move. The European Society of Cardiology's results, published in The Lancet, states a moderate intake of all fats was related to a low risk of deaths from cardiovascular disease. It will change the future of uh, recommending a more moderate amount of fat in your intake. 16-year-old Haley Hack said the study gives her a new chance to be healthier without sacrificing food that tastes good. I think that, I mean, it's just another addition to it, so I guess it's just a couple other things you have to take out of your diet and some things you have to add back in, but I don't know, it'll be different. Brooke Hack was diagnosed with heart problems at age 14 and is optimistic about the freedoms she could gain through this new diet. It's interesting, increased fats, which is one of those things with that since I was diagnosed. Keep your fats super low, keep your fats super low, keep your fats super low. Dr. Jamal said that many of his patients are shocked when they have to change their diet, and this new study could make it easier. So we'll be more relaxed for the patient, and we still recommend about 375 to 500 grams of the fruit and vegetable in your diet. About 35% of a person's energy and daily calories should come from fat, according to this study. The study also states that to stay heart healthy, no more than 60 calories per day should come from carbohydrates. That's about a fourth of a bagel. Fires are blazing across multiple states, proving that wildfire season is nowhere near over. An update on these fires next. With Hurricane Harvey barely over, the U.S. is preparing for yet another intense storm. Find out what people in Florida are doing just days before Hurricane Irma makes landfall. 
It has been a hot day here in Phoenix, but stay with us as we take a look at our seven day forecast as well as what to expect from Hurricane Irma. Coming up next on Cronkite News. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Exploring, it's the lifeblood of the mission. Human beings are a curious bunch. What are we gonna see when we get really close? Just because an idea is crazy, it's not necessarily wrong. We were on our way. You don't get anywhere until you've tested the limits. That carries an intensity you can't imagine. You could hear people just, whoa. Oh my God, absolutely spectacular. It's a rush. We ask a lot of our heroes. We are at a remarkable moment. <laughs> We're going farther than in any exploration ever has. Tickets are now available for the annual Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon. Held Thursday, October 19th at the Sheraton Grand Phoenix. Join media industry and community leaders in honoring award-winning co-anchors and co-managing editors of the PBS NewsHour, Judy Woodruff, and the late Gwen Eiffel. To learn more or to purchase tickets, call 602-496-0482 or visit cronkite.asu.edu slash luncheon. Across the western U.S., 65 large wildfires are burning on more than 2,300 square miles. Nine states are dealing with fires, including 23 in Montana, 19 in Oregon, and 14 in California. Thousands of firefighters are battling those blazes. So far, this fire season is the worst we've seen in at least five years. Take a look at this video we just got in. It shows the Mission Fire near Fresno, California. At least three homes have been destroyed there, with hundreds of others in its path. Firefighters are battling it by air and by ground. In Oregon, 153 hikers had to be rescued after fast-moving flames trapped them. Hurricane Irma ripped through the Caribbean today with winds over 150 miles per hour as the storm approaches Puerto Rico and Florida. For now, it's still a Category 5 hurricane. Irma has already made landfall in Barbuda and St. Martin. Right now, Puerto Rico is preparing for landfall any minute. And by, uh, by Sunday, the storm will have reached Florida. Florida's governor declared in a state of emergency today. President Trump uh, uh, also talked about it this morning. There's a new and seems to be record-breaking hurricane heading right toward Florida and Puerto Rico and other places. We'll see what happens. We'll know in a very short period of time, but it looks like it could be something that will be uh, not good. People in Florida are lighting up for gas. As you can see, this line to fuel up wraps around the street. They're also purchasing home items like generators, flashlights, batteries, and building materials. And of course, they're stocking up on bottled water as well. And of, as the storm is uh, prepared before the storm arrives, expected this weekend. Cronkite weather reporter Chelsea Ray Ibanez joins us now with a look at Irma and our forecast here. Yes, we have been keeping an eye on Hurricane Irma. Right now, the storm is expected to move past the Dominican Republic, Cuba, and then up to Miami on Sunday afternoon. Right now, wind speeds are at 180 miles per hour, but they're going to continue to decrease Friday at 160 and Saturday 155, putting it into that category four hurricane. On Monday, we are expected to see a drop once again to 120, putting it into a Category 3 hurricane. But let's take a look at the temperatures across the state. Right now, Grand Canyon at a great 74, Flagstaff 79, Prescott 80. But as we get into the valley, we do stay a couple degrees below 110. Phoenix, we are at 106, Scottsdale 104, and Coolidge 103. Later tonight, we are going to drop down below that 100 degree mark. Apache Junction at 95, Superior at 88, and Coolidge 94. But let's take a look at our seven day forecast. We do have some good news for this weekend. Thursday, we are gonna get some PM showers with a high of 106, but Friday and Saturday, we're gonna drop down a little bit lower, 100 degrees on Friday, 96 on Saturday, with a 20% chance of some rainfall. 
Going into the rest of the week, we are going to have some clear skies. Sunday, 104, Monday, 107, Tuesday and Wednesday, 106. I'm Chelsea Ray Ibanez, Cronkite News. You see all sorts of things in your daily commute. But how about sharing the road with a skateboard at 60 miles per hour? Coming up on Cronkite News, we'll meet a Young Valley entrepreneur who's adding a little speed to skateboarding. <laughs> what are you doing? Possibilities. For you. Your day is filled with them. Reach up, energy in the fingertips, collapse. TV played down in that. And PBS helps everyone discover theirs. Anytime, anywhere. Up in the sky, you can see it. PBS, we're with you for life. Third Rail with Ozzy. The new weekly show where we tackle the taboo and debate the tough questions with some of the most interesting minds in the game. I'm Carlos Watson, electrifying conversation, Friday, only on PBS. You've probably seen people riding them down the sidewalk, in the park, or around town. Electric skateboards have become one of the trendiest ways to get around. And One Valley Skate Company is said to leave its competitors in the dust. Although only 21, Levi Conlow is already making huge waves across the skating community. The Grand Canyon University student was walking between classes one day when inspiration struck. Someone flew past me on an electric skateboard, uh, instantly fell in love. I knew I had to have one, uh, looked it up, couldn't afford it, and that started the years. Shortly after, Conlo began making his own boards and founded electric lawn boards along with his friend and classmate, Nathan Cooper. The pair began selling their boards online last year and success was almost instant. In a little over 12 months, the duo have made over $700,000 in revenue and sold over 1,500 boards. But there's more to this blossoming company than meets the eye. Beyond the hard work and success is a very special concept. It's called conscious capitalism, and it's at the core of electric lawn boards. Conscious capitalism is the idea that um, there's something bigger than the business, right? It's, it's about giving back, helping others in need. The two take this message to heart and plan on giving back in a big way this holiday season when they donate 1,000 boards to foster kids throughout the valley. Because for Conlo, it's never been about the money. It's always been about giving back and spreading the hobby that he loves. We focus on the customer, the community, the culture we're developing, and the sales and the numbers, that all comes second. In Phoenix, Tim Johns, Cronkite News. Electric Longboard Signature Board, the LS, retails for $429. Cronkite News is proud to be the news division of Arizona PBS. Here's what's coming up next on Arizona Horizon and PBS NewsHour. On the next Arizona Horizon, the latest on Joe Arpaio's attempt to have his criminal conviction vacated in light of being pardoned by the president. And we visit a summer camp that connects kids with nature in the middle of the city. I'm Judy Woodruff on the next news hour. A look at how Pittsburgh is using new smart technology to reduce traffic congestion. That's Wednesday on the PBS News Hour. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thank you for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.
Landslides, devastating killers. I saw a gigantic wall of mud, and then we were hit. Now, can scientists predict the next slide before it's too late? There's people yelling for help. Killer Landslides on Nova. Tonight at 8 on Arizona PBS. Explore new ideas and new worlds here on Arizona PBS, a community service of Arizona State University. Tickets are now available for the annual Walter Cronkite Award for Excellence in Journalism Luncheon. Held Thursday, October 19th at the Sheraton Grand Phoenix. Join media industry and community leaders in honoring award-winning co-anchors and co-managing editors of the PBS NewsHour, Judy Woodruff, and the late Gwen Eiffel. To learn more or to purchase tickets, call 602-496-0482 or visit cronkite.asu.edu slash luncheon. Coming up next on Arizona PBS, life and world. I'm Scott Pelley, anchor and managing editor of the CBS Evening News. In our changing media landscape, it is crucial for journalism education to ensure a commitment to the truth, unbiased reporting, strong ethics, unwavering fairness, and above all else, accuracy. These are the hallmarks of ASU's Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication. It's a place where students can innovate and transform the news industry while always upholding the values of the school's namesake. The Cronkite School at ASU, preparing the next generation for a stronger future of journalism. Coming soon to Arizona PBS, in a time of kings and princes, power was in the hands of the few. Then, one man broke through, challenging an empire with little more than an idea. His story would engage millions and inspire generations in the quest for truth. His name, Martin Luther. Tuesday night at 7 on Arizona PBS. Support for Arizona PBS comes from viewers like you and from Hospice of the Valley, medical, social, and spiritual care for patients nearing end of life and support for their families. A not-for-profit community hospice, hov.org. Whitfield Nursery, proud to support Arizona PBS, a valley tradition since 1946. Over 200 acres of Arizona-grown trees, citrus, and palms. Complete custom design and installation, and Whitfield Nursery still does the digging. WhitfieldNursery.com. Coming up next on Arizona Horizon, what's next for DACA recipients in Arizona now that the Deportation Protection Program is set to expire? Also tonight, Joe Arpaio gets a presidential pardon before he's even sentenced, but the former sheriff wants more. And we visit a summer camp that connects kids with nature in the middle of the city. Those stories next on Arizona Horizon. Arizona Horizon is made possible by contributions from the Friends of Arizona PBS, members of your PBS station. Thank you. Good evening and welcome to Arizona Horizon. I'm Ted Simons. Former State Senate President Russell Pierce is threatening to sue the Arizona Board of Regents. This over the practice of offering in-state tuition to DACA recipients. Pierce tells Capital Media Services that he'll personally file suit if Attorney General Mark Burnovich doesn't file his own lawsuit by Saturday. Pierce says the in-state tuition policy is, quote, damaging the nation and destroying the rule of law. Brnovich also thinks the policy is against state law, and he does plan to ask the Supreme Court to uphold a ruling against the subsidized tuition. But Brnovich says he will not attempt to, quote, score cheap political points over the issue. And reaction continues over the Trump administration's plans to end the DACA program. Republican Congressman Andy Biggs released a statement that read in part, I applaud President Trump for repealing the unconstitutional executive order that created DACA and appropriately returning to the debate to Congress. I hope that Congress will work to secure our borders, fully enforce the immigration laws we have on the books, and eliminate the incentives for future illegal immigration.
For more on yesterday's decision to end DACA and the impact on those protected by the program, we welcome State Representative Tony Navarrete, who also serves as the Deputy Director of Promise Arizona, a community organization.